Hey, Jerry. Hey. How's it going? Good. You can hey. have a mic. All right. You can run the board. Sweet. I have a TriCaster at home. Yeah. <laughs> now you're in charge of Twit. Yes. Congratulations. I like the um, I like the purse. Oh yeah. Actually, oh yeah. That's, too. that's it's very. Cute. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't it see plays. That. Yeah, Fun. so it's a purse that works. It does. It's a Nintendo on a chip in there with an LCD screen, and you can remove the controllers and play. Um, I took the batteries out because I have to hop on a plane tomorrow. Oh, yeah. The battery packs look like sticks of dynamite, so it's probably not a good do they, idea. Do they have a problem? I guess they would have a problem with that. Yeah. yeah, I managed to get all this stuff down here, like my... Coils of wires and sticks of odd things. Yeah, yeah. without getting the... Yeah. The personal treatment. Yeah. I'm sorry for barging in and... You're not. No. You're not. We're just sitting here shooting the breeze. Oh. Yeah, Jason stormed off, you know. Breaking just, wind. Just ticked. Tom, anyway. Have you heard the expression... Yes. I was kidding. ...to get wind of something? I was kidding. Yes, I have. Yes, thank you. I was kidding... But breaking it's wind different. sounds like something you can't else to me. Kid. Breaking wind, because right? Because someone is always going to be like, there's no one I meant to. <laughs> you just can't kid anymore these days. You can't. <laughs> when I break wind, you'll know it. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to leave this room. All right, fine. Bye. I'm actually going to go work on uh, iPad today. So or actually, I should do this first. This is the new Jerry That's Ellsworth show. Oh, the new Jerry Ellsworth mm-hmm. show. Uh, welcome, my guest. Hi, I'm Tom. Tell me about all your electronic experience. Um, well, I started with a... It's uh, called Breaking Wind. A TI-35. Oh. Uh, a programmable calculator. I don't understand. Kind um, of the brown with the little silver keys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used Thank to you. I used to do oh, um, calculate my biorhythms on it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> How did that work for you? Um, I, you know, it was probably uh, some sort of placebo effect, but I always I felt like it was pretty accurate. <laughs> it did. It came. It came with like three cards. Uh, one was like a, f- a factoring card of some sort. Another was like just a list of uh, commands, and the third card was how to use the TI to calculate your biorhythms. They actually shipped it biorhythms. Yeah. Oh boy. It was it was really weird. Was this the one that also had, had the graph. magnetic strip that you could load programs in through? No, I don't think. I don't think the thirty five had the strip. There was no there was no program loading on that one. All right, we're gonna lower through breaking wind. <laughs> <laughs> break in. Oh, break in. Break in wind. And the sequel, break into electric boogaloo. I do have headphone hair. It's like a plume. So I didn't get any of those fancy calculators when I was a kid. I thought I was really hot stuff when I finally got a cheap Radio Shack calculator that I can convert between decimal, binary, and hex. Oh, so yeah. So it made my programming a lot easier. That is that is pretty swift. My dad was a uh, food scientist, so he always had cool calculators around that I would steal and play around, mess around with. Hmm. And then he would get mad because he needed them to do his job. Uh, I mean, get really mad. He's like, um, okay. I, I need that now. <laughs> Bye, that buddy. Bye, Zara. Bye. Bye. Enjoy breaking wind. It's going to be a good break one. Break in. <laughs> we all do. So did you see my dress here? With oh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Show off your dress. That's pretty awesome. So I went to an event called Barbot, Robots That Make Cocktail Drinks, and that was Friday in San Francisco. Um, kind of Rube Goldberg things. And uh, it was kind of a last-minute thing, so I was flying down from Portland, and the night before I, I whipped this together so I wouldn't be em- empty-handed. So it's an Instamatic camera that I gutted out so I could hide all the electronics inside. Then I have a wire that runs down into my dress that goes to a, a chain of LEDs that have a delay line. I might get a little racy here as I... Whoa, look at the wires. <gasps> wow. She really is made of wires. Yes. So there's a chip here that does the delay line for each of the, the LEDs and some timing capacitors to, to give it an interesting... Uh, Everyone's pointing at a chair. And then it's a motion sensor? Yeah, so this is a PIR motion sensor. So it should go when I move my hands, maybe. There it goes. Oh, yeah, there we go. And then 
switch it. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. So, so narrow it away. Yeah, you can see him. That's way cool. Yeah, your stream. It's difficult to get onto a plane. I had to dismantle it. Oh yeah. And uh, put on a on a box. I said uh, I, I wrote prototype handle with care. That way they knew that it was meant to be. How long did it take you to so get you, through? So you didn't wear that dress through security, is what you're saying? No. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if you tried. Beep. Uh, Beep. Well, Star Simpson, um, a lady out of Boston, had a shirt that had LEDs on it. And she went just to the airport to pick, I think, her boyfriend up. Uh -huh. And the security, like, arrested her and put her in jail for a couple nights. I didn't just, hear about that. Yeah, Star Simpson. Yeah, Cap was she Kipper. even going through security? Her. or? I don't think she went through security. I think she was just there to pick her boyfriend up. And they're just like, we don't like LEDs flashing on shirts. You're arrested. Yeah, it was You're like under a arrest. circuit board with LEDs. Oh, my God. So this is, right in here is a PIR. It's a um, pyroelectric cell. It has two pixels in it that are right next to each other. And it, it auto-adjusts itself to the room. And so if there's heat differences in the room... It, okay. it will not send out a, an, imp, an impulse down these wires. Mm -hmm. But any time something warm impinges on one of the, the, the two pixels, it will cause an impulse. Yeah. And that's how these motion sensors work. It, see, it seems to be better at the long distance yeah, it does. than it's, up close. How long did it take you to put that together? Oh, it was four hours. Just four hours? Yeah. Well, I had some of the other pieces from another project. Okay. It took me longer to hot glue the camera together. Yeah. Because I had to take all the guts out of it. Where'd you find the Instamatic? Oh, I think Just I like picked it up at Goodwill yeah, yeah. years ago. I, I try to keep a lot of hack material around so I can... So my choices for enclosures, so I could either just hide it under the dress somewhere, uh -huh. or I was going to use a baby monitor. I thought that would be kind of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or uh, um, a, I had this big kind of like calculator so uh -huh. calculator it was like an old 70s calculator yeah um, but that that sit down, you pull that looks chair. really unobtrusive you just look like you're uh I'm a tourist. You're, just, you're just taking pictures you know you're japanese wandering around <laughs> taking pictures so that's that nice so uh, did you get to see the studio Oh, the new studio. Stu yeah. The studio is like, left, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's huh? awesome. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's crazy, isn't it? Yes, I yeah. can't believe it. I don't know how, what we're going to do with all that space. And I can't wait to try. Oh, man. i got to go see this thing. Leo's well, right trying to sell me on putting uh, pinball machines in the basement. Oh, yeah. We, there's there's a basement? all kinds of ideas. The basement is exactly the same size as the upstairs. But there's actually a basement. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And it's it's like uh, I don't know what is it an eight foot yeah. clearance I think something like that it's it's really short it's really low ceiling so you're not allowed to put anything in there that is uh, continuously occupied workspace according to code okay so we're coming up with all of these Air ideas for you know everywhere yeah different things like we could put a gym down there pinball machines roller derby track totally <laughs> roller <laughs> derby track down there here I'm gonna rip this apart yeah are you done all my wires are. It's all falling apart. Are you disassembling yourself? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Live coverage of Jerry's disassembly. <laughs> She's gained sentience and is breaking apart. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> there. More comfortable. Oh, let me take, do you mind if I take Yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, the possibilities are endless. Mm. At the studio. I mean in life, I, too. But I meant particularly. <laughs> in general, you know, life advice at TNT. I and want happens. some of that space. Well, I think you could probably uh, work out a deal to have some of it. Does Leo have good insurance? Yes, actually, he does. <laughs> it's one of those rented out hacker spaces, one of those And And uh, there seems to be a lot of fire retardant sprayed down there, <laughs> if I remember right. That's perfect for... Like just beginning to learn to hack things. Yeah. You're trying to solder something and goes really badly. I thought really 
Cool. Could be I don't know if I've ever had any fire during solder, but I've definitely it's more when you scorched put, a lot of things. When you put the iron where it's not supposed to, you just kind of like leave it somewhere, and you're like, oops. Oh, yeah. That's where. Not if you're using it properly. No, no. <laughs> this is when you're just beginning. You're like, oh, left it on the desk. Yeah, I did that at CNET. There's a mark on my desk that Brian Tong uses now. My first soldering iron as a kid was a wire-wound resistor that I hooked to a wall wart, one of these wall transformers, mm-hmm. and plugged in. Because my dad wouldn't buy me a soldering iron. So you just made one. I made one, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. But my dad caught me. I think I even burned the carpet with it a couple times. and was, But he eventually caught me, and he's like, okay, well, we'll get you a real soldering iron. That's one way of doing it. <laughs> burn the carpet. I will burn this house down if you don't give me and a soldering iron. And there's advice, again, for life. Burn the house down, yeah. and you'll get a soldering iron. Well, cool. What else is up? Well, it's, uh, I'm working on a bunch of projects. What are you working on? I'm Promote. <laughs> working on uh, mechanical television. Yeah. Um, it's In the early days of television, when they were developing it, they experimented with spinning discs that had holes drilled in it um, as in a spiral around this disc, and they had a strobing neon bulb behind it. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> as this flying dot would go across the view window on it, it would, you could turn pixels on and off. Uh huh. It was really clunky. So I'm going to try to make a TV that's using modern chips, but it's completely mechanical like that. Uh huh. And see if I can make a projector. So the so, chi- chips are re- are controlling the mechanics, but the but the actual display is still mechanical. Is yeah, that the idea? Yeah, so it's going to be mechanical flying dot. Ah, oh, wow. That's weird. It kind of reminds me of DLP and how that whole thing works, that rainbow spin wheel thing. Very much like that. Yeah. 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 So do you, um, uh, what, what resolution do you get? Uh, I think the original ones were 32 scan lines mm-hmm. by, I think it was a continuous you know, gradient you could get across. It wasn't distinct pixels. 32P? <laughs> 32 progressive, yes. That's awesome. <laughs> Actually, I should. Stand very far back for it to make to make it look like anything. These DLPs have a trick so they can get higher resolution. They have a, a mirror that, that rotates and, uh-huh. and adds more scan lines. So maybe I can do that. Maybe you can interpolate, yeah. yeah. Oh, so do you, so make, I can interlace it. Yeah. So I could have maybe a little piezo You're disc like, that's uh, moving it back This is forth. 32i. <laughs> How many of those could you put together to make something larger than 32p? Oh, as like, far as the Could you build a matrix mirrors? of all these things? And like actually... Try to go up 480p, just go nuts. What, a bunch of spinning discs? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. Um, so you have multiple ones and you project out. And right, then you yeah. You've got to split the signal out to the 30, so you break it out into 8 or whatever. Mm. And you can actually have like something we could like see normally, because 32p is going to look really lousy unless you're very far away. Yeah, yeah. But I think you could build something like a matrix that look really neat. That would be cool, like all these huge spinning discs. Yeah. <sighs> that would be awesome. And the sound yeah. would be amazing. <laughs> Now back in in the early days, the the people that went on stage had to wear like dark black lipstick, mm-hmm. and like they would shade their eyes to to cause like all these contours, so yeah. you could like identify women from men because it was so bad. Yeah, those were the sets where you, you see that where they the screen is like that big. Yeah, and then they had a magnifying glass on the front. Exactly. Because it, it you were actually just like, well, we got to make it big enough so people could see it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to use these ultra bright LEDs, like the ones that are just blinding. Uh-huh. I, I think I can project with it. Yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. So it'd be 64i, I guess, if Correct. you if you interpolate it, if it's 32 scan lines. That's cool. Yes, I can scoot in. <laughs> there we go. And then the wall, of, and then the wall of spinning discs, which will look good no matter what side you're looking at. Exactly. Well, someone last night suggested that I make, like, imagine a coffee can that has these holes in it, and then you could put a divider inside and have two LEDs that are they're blinking, causing uh-huh. these pixels. Now you can make a 3D display because oh, yeah. your eye would only see right one 